I look back on my career. Look, Monster, when I arrived there, I was shooting SWAT. I got a call from um, Clark Peterson, a friend who was the producer of it, and the film was in trouble. I think they were a day in, and they were uh, thinking of shutting the film down oh, wow. uh, for a series of catastrophes that had befallen them. And I was still shooting SWAT, and they said to me, uh, Clark had known me, I'd done some low-budget films when I first arrived in the States. Is there any way I could leave the last few weeks of SWAT, uh, whereas be paid a fortune, by the way, <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, and I, there's a reason I'm telling you that, and come and shoot a monster for virtually no money. Mm -hmm. And I said, that was out of the question, um, but I read the script. I spoke to Patty and I spoke to Charlize, and I thought them singular in their uh, dedication to their shared vision, um, full of enthusiasm and integrity. And uh, I thought, well, I've done great work on SWAT. I've blown up the front of the uh, LA, uh, library. Um, <laughs> I've crashed a couple of, uh, airplanes, um, uh, three quarter size, um, uh, had 23 cameras working on the old third street bridge. Um, I've done everything I can do here. The film's almost shoot. What the, what the hell I'll go to, uh, Florida and help them finish this little film, which no one will ever see. I hadn't really seen much of Charlize's work and she was relatively unknown. She was kind of a, a beautiful girl that uh, was always a support character, but didn't have a major lead. Mm -hmm. But when I got there, um, we um, reconstructed the crew. Um, um, we changed our methodology. Uh, we started again and used a lot of uh, um, physical freedom for Charlize. For example, normally we put marks down and have actors go to marks so they can hit the lights just right. But I saw the way Charlize was acting and she was completely uh, possessed by this character. So I thought it would be a good idea to eliminate Mark so she doesn't have to look for them. And what we did was we'd have a camera assistant off the side who would um, see where she was moving and then radio to the uh, focus puller next to the camera who would then move the focus according to the report coming over the radio so that wow. Charlie could go wherever she wanted. And then, of course, then there's a problem with lights uh, you know, because she would be coming in and out of light. So I said, oh, let's not have stationary lights. We got some painter's poles and we put some paper lanterns at the end of them. And I spoke to each of the electricians and I said, when she moves here, that light goes there. This light goes behind, this light dims. And we eventually worked out a system where she'd go wherever she wanted, be completely intuitive and completely inhabit the character and um, act. And the performance was uh, breathtaking.